Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.dev, crocoverflow.com, devnurture.com, the Web Dev 101 podcast, you know, I'm all from all sorts of places. But today what I want to talk about is I want to talk about promises. So what I want to do is I want to show how to implement a promise um, in JavaScript. So essentially what we're going to do is create our own custom class that basically does everything that the built-in promise class does, but this way you can kind of see what's kind of going on under the hood. More than likely, the actual promise class is implemented in a much more efficient way than I will. But the idea is we're going to kind of, uh, sometimes it's fun to try to recreate the things that exist so that way you can better understand them. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So let's let's get on with it. So I'm going to create a file. So let's create a new file. and We'll call this uh, pro. Well, well, actually, what we're going to do is we're not going to call it a promise because there's already a thing called a promise. So we'll call it an upcoming. Okay. That'll be the name of the class. So upcoming.js. So we'll define the class here, and then we'll make another file where we'll test it out. Okay, so let's see here. So I'm going to say class upcoming, and then we're going to define the class. Okay, so when we think about the syntax of a promise, okay, when I say like new promise, what we would do is we would then, you know, pass in a function that re receives like a resolve and reject argument and then we would you know do stuff in there and like that's kind of like how the promise is designed so we need to kind of replicate that design so let's start off with like the constructor okay so the constructor it's going to just receive that callback function okay and essentially what's going to happen is that we're going to define two functions so we'll say const resolve equals and then that's going to be a function. And then we are going to have, actually, I want to use an arrow function. Because the reason being is that since I'm defining the function here, um, I want to use this keyword. And I want to make sure that when I say use this, that it's referring to this object. Or essentially using the... Basically, what happens when you use an arrow function, it doesn't get its own this. So this refers to whatever this refers to in the in the upper context. So essentially, whatever this is to the constructor is what this will be to this arrow function. While if I made it, if I use the function keyword, then this will belong to whoever invokes the function. So like the it the the use of the this keyword will be context aware. Okay, I don't want it to be sort of context aware. I want this to rely on what this is inside the constructor which is the object okay the, the the upcoming the our version of the promise okay so i'm going to purposely use a a, a uh, arrow function there and then we're gonna have a function called reject okay cool and essentially what's what will happen Okay, and we'll talk. We'll define what those resolve and reject functions do in a second. And the question is, like, should I define them there? Let me think about that for a second. Actually, no. We should define them as just straight up methods. So I'm going to take that out there. Okay. So what's going to happen is that again, we need to define the reject method, or we'll first do resolve. And again, resolve takes in one argument, which is another callback. Uh, no, not a callback. It just takes in a value. And then we're going to have reject, which also takes in an error. And we do a thing with it. And then again, we have our other methods, such as this, or uh, then. So we'll have then, which takes in a callback. We will have catch, which takes in a callback. And then we will have finally which takes in a callback. Okay. So we have our methods and what we do need is we need some like to establish some properties on on this particular object. So one property I am going to want is um, this we'll call it thens with a s. Okay. Now I do not want this property to be something that's accessible from the outside. So I'm going to make it a private property by giving it a hash at the top, right there. So that's kind of a newer JavaScript feature. Pretty standard in most other languages, but newer in JavaScript. So I can actually put a hash here. And the idea is that, you know, 
this cannot be referred to externally. So I can't like console log my 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 upcoming dot ends. But the idea is that you know there is a possibility that they may register multiple comebacks as a dot end that'll get triggered when you know when the promise resolves. So I'm going to want an array that I can track those. Okay, and then I'm going to want the same thing for like catches. This dot catches equals an array, and this dot, uh, and then this dot um, finallys equals an array. Cool. Okay. So essentially what should happen, okay, is when resolve runs, okay, and we pass it a value, what it should do is run any function that has been registered via a dot then. Okay, so essentially what it should be for basically for func for func of this dot thens. This dot thens, and then we should say for let func of this dot thens. Then we will call the func and pass it the value. So essentially, resolver saying, okay, we're taking that value. Now let's run all these functions that have been registered with dot then, so that way they can do whatever those functions do. Okay, func value. Okay. Um, then we sign const. Okay, so yeah, it just the linter just wants me to make this const so that we can stop complaining. Okay, but also what I want to do is that after that, I want to the finallys run whether you the whether it's resolve or reject. So in that case, I want to also do for const for const func of this dot finallys what I want then is to then say those funks and then those funks get past nothing okay we're just going to call those funks because finallys usually don't receive a value because they're going to run whether there's a resolution or not and if there's no resolution then there's no value to pass so generally those are just things that you would want to happen regardless okay so essentially it's gonna be the same thing for like reject. So the only difference is that instead of this will be dot this dot catches. Okay. But basically, um in this case we're passing the error. So let me make sure I put pass the error in. Okay, and that's how the reject and resolve are gonna be passed. Okay. And again, those functions then get passed. So then we take that callback that you pass into the constructor. Okay, because again, we pass a construct. If you use a promise, um, you pass a callback into the constructor. Okay, so we're going to take that callback. We're going to call it, passing in the resolve and reject functions. Actually, it would be like this dot um, resolve, this dot reject, and we pass that in there. Okay, and that's going to how the that's how these functions become available to the callback. Okay, but now we need to register things in the dot then. So whenever you do a dot then and you pass in a callback, essentially what it's going to do, it's going to take the callback and say this dot thens dot push, and it's going to push the callback into that array. Okay, and essentially it's going to be the same process for catches. Okay, and then last the, the finallys. So essentially, what's happening is that really what you're doing with the catch then and finally is you're pushing a function into an array, and then when the when the promise resolves or rejects, it's going to go to those arrays and then just call all the functions you have in those arrays at that time, passing in 
the value you pass into resolve. So again, if I call resolve, I pass resolve a value. It then goes through all the array of functions inside the dot then and passes them the value and then just in invokes all the functions in the final ease. And then when it's reject, it's the same thing, but instead of catches and final ease. So final ease run either way. Catches run if there's a rejection. Um, thens run if there's a resolve. Okay, so essentially this is, that's it. That's, that's a promise. Um, again, this is not exactly the same, just because it, it probably won't have the same effect on the event loop, where because that's really kind of built into how like into core JavaScript in the sense that like when you use a promise, it's built into JavaScript. It will wait till the next loop to reevaluate the dot then. But um, also, I think I actually might actually have also have something to do with the fact that it's a callback. I always uh, get foggy on the event loop. I need to go refresh on that. But Let's export this. So again, because I'm going to be doing this in Node. So in Node, I can export this by just doing module.exports equals upcoming. So it's going to let me bring it into another file. So let's like test upcoming. And so in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to import that. So I'm going to say const upcoming equals require. And then I'm going to just say, hey, I want to bring in what's coming in from upcoming.js. Okay, and that'll take that thing that I exported, which is the upcoming class, and put it in a variable called upcoming in the context of that file. Okay, cool. So now I can try it out. So let's try it out. Let's create a promise. So we'll say um, const uh, const uh, upcoming. We'll do it lowercase. Upcoming equals a new upcoming object. And then I pass it a callback that receives resolve and reject. And we'll keep it real simple. We'll just say like if true, let's resolve one and else we will reject reject two. Okay. Now thinking about how this is going to play out, this isn't going to get delayed. That's my problem. So I'm going to, there's going to be a problem here that we're going to fix, but let's just actually play it out. Okay. So then we'll take the upcoming and do a dot then. And then we'll again receive the value and we'll console.log the value. We'll do a dot catch. In fact, I'll just chain these together. Dot then. Dot catch. Catch. Console dot log. Actually, there should be error. Error. Console dot log error. And actually, again, this should be, we'll just say error. And then we'll do a dot finally, um, which we'll just say um, there's no no it receives nothing, so it's just, we're just going to console dot log either way. Okay, and let's run this and see if it runs. I don't think it's going to run the way I'd like it to run, but we'll, we always test first. Don't make assumptions. Node test upcoming JS, and what do we get? We get an error. So let's see what the error says. Oh, I forgot to put the dot slash. Because I'm referring to a file in the same folder, I got to put the dot slash so that way it knows to look in the same folder. When I put nothing, then it's going to assume it's something that I've installed from, from NPM and I'm not using NPM. So yes, I got to put the dot slash. So I did that. Now let's fix that. We got a different error now. Private field dot thens must be declared in an enclosing class. Ah, okay. Got it. So basically what's saying is that in order to use private fields, I got to do this. Uh, tens equals an array. I always forget this aspect of the, the private field syntax. So essentially I just got to do it like this. Okay, and then really I don't need to do this. Okay. 
cool. Okay. So let's see here. Let's try that again. Oh, how about this dot final? Where did I put that? This dot final leaves. Okay, so see, so you read the errors. And the errors usually tell you where to go look. Okay, so it's telling me, okay, private field finally. It's like, wait a second, I don't remember calling that finally. It's supposed to be finally. Okay, so let me go add the S. You know, just sit there, you look at the error, and the error will get you there. Okay, resolve is not defined. Uh, what line is it referring to? Test upcoming 5.9. Ah, that's right, because I called it res and reg. Because, see, I declared it as res and reg, not as resolve and reject. So I really got to do resolve and reject here. Okay, next error. Cannot read properties of undefined. Reading bends. Okay, so here's where I, th I figured it was going to be a problem. Okay, so what's happening is that the array is empty. Well, this dot bends const function of... Why is it saying bends is undefined? This dot bends. Let me just double check. Uh, private JavaScript fields. Private class features. Private field. Private field equals, uh, and then when I access, yeah, so this dot private field, so that seems right. Okay, so that's that's all good. Okay, so I don't see anything syntactically wrong there. We're saying this dot dense const func of this dot dense is. Did I declare this wrong? It's not. It's an array. Hmm. Let's console log this. So that we have that log, so we can kind of determine, hey, what does the object look like? So let's run that again. It's saying this is undefined. Interesting. Why would this not be undefined? Oh, okay. I understand why. The reason is because when I pass the function to this, it becomes a prop. So basically, I'm passing the function to the callback. So the callback becomes this, or basically, it loses its context. So what I got to do the, is the fun, fun, fun adventure of binding. Okay, so I got to do this. Const resolve equals this dot resolve dot bind this, and then pass in resolve. Because what that does, it just guarantees that this version of resolve will always have the this the the the, the constructed object as the context. So let me just do that again. Okay, and this one will be reject. And this is going to be reject. find this and then this becomes reject so let's try that out see like does that fix the console log so now what i should expect is that the console log should be the actual object like the actual like upcoming object not undefined okay because they bound the functions so let's see here what did i get and see that worked that actually turned it see now i'm getting the right console log that the upcoming object is this okay now so i'm getting a different error which is good so cannot read properties of undefined reading catch okay so because probably we have the same issue somewhere else um, <clears throat> of this dot then reading catch wait do I have a catch catch not read properties of undefined when did I use catch here I use catch as a chain of upcoming Oh, it's because I'm chaining them together, and here's what I forgot to do. Okay, this dot then to make them chainable, I need to return this because I got to return the actual promise. So I need to add return this here because that way it returns itself, 
and then you can chain. I always forget that part. Whenever you want to make something chainable, it's got to return itself. Return this. Okay, so that should fix that. Okay, and notice our, none of our functions actually ended up uh, playing out. Okay, the reason being is that this whole resolve and reject thing is playing out before my dot. So basically, what happens is that based on the way like JavaScript naturally works, this is running during the constructor, so which is happening before I do the dot then the dot cache dot finally. So I need to find a way to delay this callback. Okay, the one way I can think of delaying this callback is to do a set timeout. Set timeout. Okay, and set timeout takes a function. Okay. Which will just be our callback. And I'm gonna delay it like literally one millisecond. <clears throat> okay. Um, just so that way, because basically the way, when you do a set timeout, it's gonna knock it to the end of that event loop. So that should have the effect that I want. Again, not 100% sure. We'll find out in a moment. So I get an error. Let's see what happened here. Callback argument must be of type function. Received undefined. So validators name function. Hmm. Did I write set timeout? Timeout handler, time handler, timeout number. Oh, okay, because I'm invoking the function. Got it. Um, so what I need to do is wrap this in an arrow function. Like that. Because what I want to do is I don't want to pass the call, the function call, because here I'm technically passing the return value. What I want to do is pass a function that then calls the thing. Okay, so that, let me get rid of this at timeout. Cool, and see that works. Okay, so that that did it. Okay, so by doing that, just that one millisecond timeout, again, it pushes pushes it later into the event loop. It delays the execution of it, um, and that allows the other lines of code because technically, set timeouts the way they work in the event loop is basically since you're delaying things, this is going to go on and run the rest. So just by delaying it by millisecond, I push it to the end of the event loop. So now basically, it, all these dot ends and dot catches will get read. And notice, see, it played the, it did the dot then, and the dot finally. And if I change this to false, see, then I get the dot catch and the finally. So yeah, it works exactly like a promise. Okay, so we literally just have implemented our own custom version of promises. I could go add some extra fancy methods and make it customized for you know special, unique purposes if I wanted to. But the idea being that like yeah, you know, you can you know make your own custom versions of these things. I mean, people made promises before promises were built into JavaScript. But hopefully by seeing how this is constructed, uh, this kind of helps you see how promises work under the hood. But again, just to kind of re review, we create a new upcoming. I'm passing it the callback. That callback gets called delayed by one millisecond, pushing it to the end of the event loop. Okay, again, I have to bind the resolve and reject to make sure that the context, aka make sure that the constructed upcoming is still this. Okay, but essentially what I'm doing is I'm passing this resolve and reject function down, and all these resolve and reject functions do is that they're going to call all the dot then functions and dot finally functions, or call all the catches and finally functions. Now to register a function in those arrays, I can use the dot then function, which would take the callback that I put it, put it into the dot thens array. I can use the dot catch function, which will push a function into the dot catches array. And I can use a finally, which pushes a function into the finally array. And then again, based on whether the function resolves or rejects, it will run all the functions in the particular uh, array. Okay, and then that's, then that all works. Okay, so. And then again, each of these functions return this, so that way I can chain them. So that way, instead of having to be like upcoming dot then upcoming dot catch, I can go upcoming dot then dot catch dot finally. Because as long as it returns this, I can then chain the next method off that same object because I'm returning that same object. 
Okay, so yeah, and again, I did these as private fields, so now I so that way I can't console log it. Like if I try the console log one, like if I try to do this console log upcoming dot bends, even though that's a property, I'm gonna get an error. So you see here, I get an error. Private field must be the, well, uh, basically, I can't access it outside. That's really what it's coming down to. Okay. So that way I protect those details from people who want to just like mess around with my custom type um, so they don't break it. Okay, so cool. So that's 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 essentially how promises kind of work under the hood. Again, exactly how the native JavaScript promise is implemented might be slightly different under the hood, but we basically replicated the same functionality. Um, and the actual class, let's see how many lines of code the actual class was. Uh, about 57 lines of code, and honestly, we could probably trim that out down quite a bit if we really wanted to. So you see, not that much code to get that functionality. Um, you know, uh, yeah. So hopefully you guys enjoy that. My name is Alex Merced from AlexMercedCoder.dev. Have a great day and enjoy. Cool. See y'all later.